Gaurav Gobalkar of Commerce fame. Welcome to On BJ's Playlist. It is such a pleasure to be speaking to you today. Um, of course, we have gathered here to speak about your Sofa Mo album, Void. But before we get to that, um, so much has changed um, since mm -hmm. the time we last connected. It's It's been five years. A pandemic has happened. Uh, the band has seen, um, you know, has gone through a its fair share of, or rather, rather unfair, you know, <laughs> share of uh, changes, if I may say. But it is so amazing that you have uh, come back. You've come back with newer sounds, with a very, uh, very, very outlier kind of uh, music, but mm -hmm. music that you strongly are convinced that this is what you want to do. So first things first, welcome to On BJ's Playlist. How are you doing? Thank you so much. I'm, I'm very good. Thank you for having me here. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you and about this. And it's so nice to know that you have been rooting for Kumar Rasi in, to, since 2019. So it's amazing to know that. Thank you so much. I'm very good. Uh, I'm in Germany right now and it has been nice. It has been a very different experience. I moved here one and a half year ago. So okay. it is. Yeah, it has been very good. Well, before we talk about your uh, Sofa Mo album, Void, uh, Gaurav, we have to first uh, address the elephant in Rome. I think uh, there's no point in beating around the bush. Uh, for people who have followed you and your music since your self-titled uh, debut album, in mm -hmm. which you released, I think, in the winter of 2018. And... Everyone is now asking the question in India, at least, where are the bands? But now mm -hmm. we are actually speaking to, you know, a, a, the front man of Comorosi. And it's important for us to understand between the first album and the second album, what has Comorosi gone through? What has the progression of this journey been about? If you could just tell us in a nutshell. Yeah, it has been full of ups and downs, uh, if I was to summarize in one sentence. So the album, we released the album expecting nothing. Uh, absolutely, we had no expectations. It was our first album, so we didn't know what to expect. And uh, it was quite surprising, uh, the way everybody loved the music uh, and whatever happened for the next one year with the promotion of the album. It was amazing, including... Uh, the Radio City Freedom Award in 2019. Uh, we were, I think we were riding that wave that time in 2019 when we released the album. 2019, then I started working because we realized that we have a lot of uh, listeners in UK and we were also signed to a label in Ireland that time. So I, I realized maybe we should try going out and playing a few shows there in UK. Uh, we did that. I mean, we found gigs, we found contacts, we set up a tour for a week and it was scheduled in March of 2020 and then, of course, COVID happened. Oh. So we could not go. We had everything booked. We had accommodations booked, we had flight booked and just like a, two days before we were supposed to fly, we took a decision of not going because it was like right in the beginning of COVID. Our first show was on 13th of March. Ooh. And it was a very tough decision because at that time the lockdown had not started. So right. officially from the government, there was no restriction for us to go. But yeah, the, the that, announcement you know, came, I believe, uh, sorry to cut you, I believe the announcement came a week later. It was around the third week of mm -hmm. March was when the lockdown was announced. Yeah. Yeah. So I think retrospectively, when that announcement came out, we were quite relieved that, you know, we took a right decision by not going. Because if you would have gone, you would have stuck and it would have been yes. horrible. But then it was really heartbreaking for the entire band. Like I think after uh, taking the decision to not go, I think we didn't talk to each other for a month or so uh, because we were all processing it individually. And then COVID also happened. I think six months went by in COVID without, yeah. uh, we did not, we could not meet each other even though most of us were in the same city. Our drummer at that time, drummer Anupam, he went to his hometown, but other of the rest of us were in the same city, Bangalore. 
but not meet for about six months or even more, I think. And uh, then we decided to okay, let's let's look forward and let's start working on the next album or next new music. We started writing, and I think I don't know. Uh, things had changed by that time. Maybe it's the post-COVID stress, or whatever you call it. Uh, also, my uh, musical influences had. Beginning were beginning to change a little. I was in a different direction than the rest of the band, yeah. and uh, so we had creative differences, uh, like a lot of creative differences. We wrote, we we did a lot of progress on the new music in that time, right. but but we could not finish the album because of the creative differences. Mm. Yeah, but it also have a, a rose uh, effect. I mean, if I may uh, ask, could these differences also have arose from the fact that um, it. I mean, y'all were bang in the middle of a pandemic. Of course, uh, so much of uh, personal interaction has been curtailed. Yeah. You can't really. Um, you know, there's so much of. Uh, there's so much room for you know misinterpretation sometimes. You know, or, or, you know when it comes to communication, communication uh, when it happens personally uh, is much different from. Uh, you know, say a telephonic conversation or, uh, you know, something that's written in a chat. And, you know, a lot can be lost in translation also, which is what may have, uh, you know, led to the differences uh, that arose. Uh, do you think so? To some extent, yeah. I, I mean, we cannot dismiss that because, I mean, before that, before COVID, we were all in the same city. We would rehearse every week. Uh, mm -hmm. We would meet for writing that time. We were we were also writing when we were preparing for the two. We were also writing in parallel for the new music. So, yeah, I think uh, it could have contributed to you know being on different pages at that time. So I cannot dismiss that. Uh, but it's very unfortunate uh, that it happened. Uh, yeah. And and then uh, once they told me that they did not want to continue and they did not think the band works like the way it used to work before uh yeah it was it was it, it was very heartbreaking for me uh right. and, and i'm sure for all of us because all of us were equally invested uh, on the first album in the uk tour and then in the future of the band but yeah i mean uh, they took that decision we we still on good terms with each other so there's no animosity between us but then we thought that musically we don't match together anymore uh, and then, of and, course, I mean, you know, your the uh, lack of avenues back then, uh, you know, when there was so much uncertainty of when will things, uh, you know, resort to normalcy again? When yeah. will we go back to being what we were pre-pandemic? And uh, of course, like, you know, like you rightly said, the emotional investment at that point of time would have been immense. And, you know, uh, like it, it must have taken a lot uh, on the part of, all the band members, including yourself, con you know, considering the, you know, the juncture of your life that you all were in, you know, the tough decisions that you all have to take, even at your personal fronts. Uh, I'm sure it is a culmination yeah. of all of that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it it was. It was. Uh, and uh, I think in, in COVID, because there's so much of uncertainty about life also, like, you know, you don't know what's going to happen with work. Are you going to have your job or not? It it, it was so uh, difficult to deal with that in time. And in that time, I think bang in middle of COVID, we were not even thinking about music. So all of us were quite busy in our lives. And then we started coming back to music when I think uh, COVID started wearing off or the first wave started wearing off and then we started yeah. meeting online uh, and it was not it was not like within a few months we decided to part ways it was right. we gave it a lot of time to work to try and get forward in the next album uh, it was i think in uh, if i'm not wrong in 2022 uh, beginning of 2022 that uh, we decided that okay we have to part ways and I'm sure, I mean, I unfortunately, think... it's also, uh, you know, a question of creativity, you know, it can't be uh, enforced. It's it's like, you know, yeah. uh, 
yes uh, the band's collective energy is one aspect but it's also the individual energy of each band members that also matters so when yeah uh, it 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 can happen that maybe two of uh, you know the members are thinking on one wavelength and you know the others are not able to match up or like it it's 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 actually yeah. varying uh, wavelengths also that uh, sometimes leads to such decisions but like you rightly said uh, gorov i'm very glad that you say that uh, you know there is still a lot of respect there is a lot of mm-hmm. uh, understanding you know behind each other's decision it's not a, a very easy thing also to maintain you know many a times uh, egos always takes you know uh, precedence uh-huh. somewhere or the other so i'm glad that you say that you know things are uh, you know cordial with your yeah. band members but now coming to um, you know le- looking on the brighter side uh, you met dian and uh, she is now an integral part of um, Komarosi and you have released your Sokomo album with her. So firstly, tell us about how did you meet her? I believe you all met at a uh-huh. metal gig in London. Uh, no, no. So uh, that was the photographer uh, no. that I met at a metal gig in Germany. But uh, Diane, so while I was still in India, I had not moved here. I was, uh, I, so I after we parted ways with the band, I decided to write music because i wanted to go forward i didn't know that w- how or in what form komorosi is going to continue but i wanted to write music and when i found myself at a point where i thought okay potentially i have an album worth of material that's when i started looking for a drummer and uh, i met diane online so there was, there is a website called as joinmyband.co.uk and i hmm. posted my ad on that website and diane responded to that and i think in the first uh, message and first exchange of messages over instagram and then i was quite convinced that okay this might really work and then uh, she was also very prompt so i sent her the first song demo for as a demo and she sent she recorded drums and she sent back within like 7 days or 10 days it was really quick and when i when i heard that recording the drums that she sent i was like floored because i thought okay this has really upped the bar for for me now to match with her so it was it was truly really amazing you know because you spoke about prompt uh, i think uh, that also speaks about the high level of uh, professionalism actually that is uh, that many uh, indian musicians who have come uh, you know who have interacted with uh, you know music professionals mm-hmm. uh, you know um, across the world they actually vouch for uh, yeah. why do you think uh, is there such a stark difference between how uh, musicians work in the west versus how it is here in india uh, i think i mean i'm going to be very honest so i think it's it's a part of our culture of not being direct you know <laughs> not being not being confrontational uh, i i find that people in the west are very confrontational and they are, they speak their hearts out of course i cannot say for everyone but whoever i have worked with so far they are, they are very direct and if they don't agree with something they'll just outrightly say that okay i don't agree with yeah. you or i do not have time or i cannot commit at this time maybe we can circle back in the next 6 months or so yeah. and then the expectations are very clear because i know what to expect from them and so it's it's just easier that way i think that's that's the main difference so in my experience i might be completely wrong or something completely incorrect that i might be saying but in my experience uh, being honest and direct always helps in in any kind of business transaction interestingly when you started off with the uh, commodore c gorog you would be um, on the guitars while somebody else you know fronted the vocal duties with your so for mm-hmm. more album now with void you have come you have taken to the mic so firstly how was that shift for you because uh, of course it leads to a very very drastic change in uh, the kind of uh, sounds that your audience will listen to 
and of course uh-huh. that would have had its fair share of challenges also it would have ha- it would have been a huge uh, emotional and mental uh, it would have taken a huge emotional and mental toll on you also in a certain way because you are also having to uh, firstly take to a new craft and then also uh, try and ensure that what you have delivered with your first album is somewhere retained in the second album so could you take uh-huh. us through that process yeah so uh, my initial idea was not to sing myself when i was writing these songs i always thought that i'll have a drummer I'll, i'm trying to look for a drummer and when the time comes i'll look for a vocalist as well what okay. happened was i met a few people uh, online uh, we worked together for a brief period of time and but initially only my i always i knew that i wanted to perform live so my expectation from whoever joins the band in whatever capacity mm. was that they are able to commit to performing live of course even if you are in different continents different countries you can record together that's that's quite easy now over the internet but committing to be able to play live is a whole different game and with vocalist it's really important that the vocalist is available to perform live because if i record an album with someone else and then i perform with someone else or a different vocalist it does not it, it does not have that correlation together so for me i did not think it fair to record with a person who is probably or might not be available in the next year or next two years to perform live and that was the main reason that i thought uh because i spent a lot of time looking for people or the right vocalist i met two or three people who i thought matched with the band and the vocals matched with what the music that i was making but then the uh, main thing was they were not able to commit to perform live and that was uh, like kind of a deal breaker for me because i knew that i wanted to perform at some point mm-hmm. i didn't know how i make it happen but i i i did not want to create that as a blocker for me to go and perform live and that's when i decided that maybe i should think of doing this myself and then it was a completely new journey for me because i had of course i had i was i used to sing at home uh, for yeah. myself on the guitar when i'm writing songs but it was never as a front man so it's a completely different mindset and uh, a different kind of preparation that i had to go through while recording the album as well okay. so yeah it was it is quite it was quite challenging uh, and i'm i'm glad that i could overcome it uh, because i was also afraid of starting before i started it was it was a lot of self doubt uh, but yeah i think i have overcome it now uh, uh did you uh, speak to anybody any of the frontmen out here in india um, you know for whom uh, you know their journey may have been somewhat similar to yours uh, did you exchange footnotes with anybody um not directly not like that not okay. while i was deciding to sing because uh that decision took a lot of time and it was it was completely in my head and a lot of uh, notes written down so <laughs> I, i have a habit of writing down things and comparing my options uh so a lot of that so i did not per se talk to directly to anyone as such well uh, i was just watching the music video of uh, oblivion which is one of the songs from void and uh, it has been shot by your friend uh, sharizad amin whom i believe you met at a mm-hmm. gig so uh, just take us through uh, you know meeting sharizad firstly and then discussing the idea of uh, oblivion with him and how did he bring your vision mm-hmm. to light uh, i think it was last year december in 2023 that i went to a concert in in germany near near my city uh, it was a band of i don't know black metal or some kind of post metal band called amendra they are a belgian band yeah. and I, i i went for that concert and after the concert i was just standing out waiting for the train and uh, sherazad was also at that bus stop or the train stop 
waiting for the train and it was snowing or something and i was not sure if i'm waiting for the right train so i started talking to her and then it turns out that she is a photographer and she showed me her instagram for about her photos and we started connecting on uh, amendra of course we were for amendra's concert there and then we exchanged you know uh, we realized that i realized that she listens to a similar kind of music that i'm into and when i later took a look at her instagram uh, of her work on instagram i was really amazed because at that time i was at a junction when i had almost finished my recording process of the album and i was thinking of the next steps you know the album artwork and how the album should look visually and so on and i really connected with her work that she had done so far with her style and her mood of her work and uh, so i asked her if she would be willing to work on the artwork so the mm. album cover is also done by her so that's where it started uh, then we started talking about the album i, I sent her a few songs uh, that time and then uh, she she really worked really hard on that album cover she went with a few friends to munich it's it's quite a distance from our city that our my city so i was quite surprised that she did that uh, i was not expecting i thought that she would do somewhere close by and i was uh, quite open to her artistic vision as well because i, I mean she is a photographer she has a better visual eye than i do i only guided her with the thought that i had behind the album okay. and what was i trying to achieve with the album but she had a lot of creative freedom to do what she likes with the album and a few of her references from my side were uh, andre uh, tarkovsky's movies so i'm a big fan of uh, art films and i gave a few screenshots from those movies to her to express Whoa. my train of thought so she was i mean she was quite open to all of that and she also appreciated uh, this but i i think that she also had a lot of creative freedom because i did i tried as much as i could to stay away from telling her what to do or what not to do so i wanted to her to do what she thinks and then take it forward from there so okay. that work came out very well i was very happy with the artwork and at then after the artwork she delivered the artwork uh, i finished the mixing of the album and i was plotting the timeline of the album release that when should what should happen when uh i had this idea of making an video for oblivion and i spoke to her and since she had already worked on the art- artwork she already knew what the song is what my vision for the album is and this entire story that's on the video it's completely done by her so i have no contribution to the story or the concept of the video but it, it yeah i uh, for from for me the vibe or the mood of the video is more important uh to match with the song and i think she does an excellent job with it on the video well from what i understand is you would be taking to the road in october and uh, it's going to be a mostly a uh, uk uh, centered uh, tour if that's correct yeah. but um, for your uh, fans in bangalore in mumbai who have been uh, you know long waiting to uh, you know watch you live uh, Uh, are we likely to see uh, you take to the road here in india uh it's not so likely in the near future right now because uh, i'm based in germany now i don't live in bangalore i moved here for a job uh i do take a lot of logistical planning for me to play live in india right now mm. i would love to do that uh, if i if i can but i i, I haven't given it much a thought right now so it's unlikely that i would play in the next one year or india or so maybe in, sometime in the future yeah i'm open to that idea but are you uh, abreast with the situation here in india because a lot of uh, journalists today or a lot of uh, gig regulars have one uh, knowing question at the back of their mind that where are the bands now because it's the takeover of the singer songwriters uh, where do you mm-hmm. stand in on this uh, situation gorav i think that yeah i think there's a real lack of grass grassroots venues in india there are very few venues in india to play at 
I mean, maybe every major city has one or two venues, and that's that's really that's not enough, I think. Uh, and also, I, I can understand why there are no not many bands because you know to put up a show with a band is a, a much more cost, and the band has to think a lot of things or, or think about a lot of things. Cost wise and yeah. logistics wise to put up a show, so I can understand that. But it's also because of lack of venues. Like in Bangalore, so many venues at one point of time, and then even before COVID, we lost a lot of venues for yeah. so many reasons. So I think it's a lack of venues, uh, a lack of I don't know a support system from because yeah. a band cannot put a show on its own. It needs yeah. a cool. support from the venue, from the promoters. There are some very good promoters in India that I really admire, but I think there should be more, definitely. Right. And also, uh, it's it's tricky because the turnouts at at a band show is also cons like it's quite unpredictable. So, yeah, yeah it, it's it's a summation of uh, more than one issue <laughs> for it's not a having any situation. bands. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. But if you have the opportunity to listen to uh, emerging Indian acts in recent memory, you know, uh, the pandemic has also proven to be uh, in disguise a breeding ground for a lot of uh, new talents. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. any uh, Indian independent acts whom you like uh, listening to, uh, metal, yeah. rock, whatever the genre be. Yeah, so many of them. Uh, I really like... Uh... Uh, the Earth Below. Uh, they they are uh, I don't know. I shouldn't call them metal. They are somewhere between rock and metal, but very unique music. Uh, they are from Mumbai. Uh, then I also like the uh, metal band Dirge from Mumbai. They yes. released uh, the second album, I think, recently, and I was quite blown away with that album. It was it is amazing. Uh, and there's a, a progressive rock band which I really admire from Bangalore, uh, Space Remedy. Uh, oh. Very good guys. Uh, I know them personally, and and their music is amazing. Uh, it, it's very good. It's very porcupine tree on that line of progressive rock spectrum. And yeah, I, I love I love that band. So on top of my head, I think these three bands. Uh, would be my top because you spoke like about uh, porcupine tree uh, i believe uh, they are also a huge influence in uh, you know your uh, in mm -hmm. your brand of music uh, would you want to tell us more about that because i know a lot of uh, people um, who follow my work who are also porcupine tree fans so for them mm -hmm. yeah i think uh, porcupine tree and pink floyd are two of my major influences so because of why, I mean, the reason why I started the band are these two bands, probably. And Pink Floyd really changed my life uh, in how I perceive music and how I listen to music. And when I started listening to Porcupine Tree, it taught me a lot about songwriting. So I think uh, it has it has a it has a very integral part of my personality as a songwriter or, or as, as a musician. So I really appreciate the band. I was very lucky to watch them live uh, when I moved here in Germany. And they they were defunct for 10 years and they came back with their latest album. And then I was very fortunate to be here when they were performing in Germany. So, yeah, but uh, but I think I have, I still like documentary. I still like progressive rock. But if you listen to this album, Void, it's a little different from the first album. The first album was very much in that area. And now I think I have I've strayed a little bit further from progressive rock. So it's not exactly pro progressive rock, but I think the song structures and at at its core, it's still progressive rock. So I still uh, think there are, for me, there are simi um, similarities with Porcupine Tree in the song structures, but not so much in the sound anymore. So the sound is quite different now. Well, Gaurav, you have scripted a comeback of sorts for Kama Rossi and here's hoping that when you take uh, your Sofomo album on the road uh, you find the love and the reception and 
Here's also hoping that, uh, you know, you come back soon to home grounds and uh, you we see you live on stages here in India. Uh -huh. uh, here's hoping and wishing for, you know, brighter avenues and, you know, brighter possibilities. But thank you so much, Gaurav, for taking the time out to speak to me at uh, on VGS Playlist. This has been such a wonderful chat and it's been so... Um, cathartic also for the lack of a better word to actually understand that why was one of our very own promising homegrown acts away from the scene what happened to them and now that they're back here's hoping for more music from Commodore C thank you so much and I wish you all the very best thank you so much uh, thanks for having me it was a pleasure to talk to you about so many things thank you <laughs>